in the previous video i discussed the concept i mean the idea of shared memory then implementing parallel parallel code and we saw, we saw that uh, in order to synchronize the different threads right they not to synchronize the read and writes of different th threads we have to use some kind of a synchronization primitives right and i discussed how lock can be helpful okay so in this video i'll give you a much better understanding of what a lock is so the idea is that initially uh, you have a something which is called a critical section right so critical section describes a block of code which modifies which sorry which reads or modifies assured data okay. so the only the I mean the point is that one the the region of the code which uh, access the shared memory or the only regions which are supposed to be synchronized we don't want to synchronize every single piece of code because uh, that would be that then that we won't get any speed up by utilizing multiple codes multiple cores and multiple threads so we want to um, do the thing i mean we want the threads to execute the code in as independently as possible right so if we uh, use a single log we use a single log to synchronize this uh, the entire critical section it means that if there are 10 threads only one thread will be allowed to execute the code within this critical section right so in the law the previous example the shared memory that we talked about is a single variable it's a single integer variable so there is uh, at any instant of time only one thread should be allowed to act on it right only one thread should be allowed to uh, modify it okay but now consider a comp uh, a complex data structure a complex data structure a uh, structure like let's say array hash map binary trees etc okay so these data structures does not have a single uh, memory location they have many memory locations right so if you log the entire data structure using a single log it means even though there are no contentions only one thread will be allowed to access the entire data structure for example let's take the simple example of an array okay array of four elements right so if uh, t1 wants to access the first in the element at the index 0 and t2 want to access the element at index 2 right so if we use a single log to synchronize this critical section only one thread will be allowed to uh, access the array even though there is no race condition right so there is no conflict between t1 and t2 so t1 is accessing a completely different memory location than t2 we need some mechanism to uh, use multiple logs and multiple logs and map multiple logs to different parts of the uh, the, co the complex data structure for example we can use a scheme like the log one log one should be used for first two uh, ind indexes and log two should be for used for uh, second two indices for so if uh, t t1 uh, wants I mean if a thread wants to access the element at index 0 or 1 it should acquire log 1 and if t2 wants to access the element at z, uh, 3 I mean if an element want to uh, I mean if a thread wants to access the elements at index 2 or 3 it has to acquire log 2 so at least we have some increased level of parallelism the increased level of parallelism is proportional directly proportional to the number of logs that are being used okay and we can be sure that the program will works uh, perfectly so I, i'm going to um simulate this i mean i want to explain I want, I want to show you the code which actually implements the fine grain locking mechanism 
so the setup for the simulation is that i will initialize an very big let's uh, say a large array large array of size m i'll create a large array of size m right then what i will do is that i will increment every single element i mean uh, i will create two functions okay so two function function one and function two so what function one does is that it uses a course lock so course lock means let's assume that it uses only one lock for the entire array so if a thread wants to access any element of the array it has to get that one lock so all if we if we use 10 locks in our code all the 10 10 10 i mean if you use 10 threads in the in our code all the 10 threads should should content should content for that should compete for that one single lock okay so only one thread will be allowed to modify the elements in that array okay and find the function two is we will use as many locks as there are threads so if there are 10 threads we will use okay so here there are uh yum sorry 10 threads but one lock here there are 10 threads and 10 locks okay so that is the setup of the simulation and, and what each thread does the each function does is that it just uh, chooses an index at random okay so index is equal to let's say ran both the functions it chooses an index at random let's assume that m is the size of the array and just chooses index at random from 0 to m minus 1 and it just increments that index okay just this array of i plus plus so that's what it's going to do here but but the thing is that here we are going to use a single log here we will use up to 10 logs right and we will observe that the the function to the method function to which implements fine-grained logs has a significantly better speed up right better performance than using a single log the in fact the funny thing is that in java up up to java 1.4 which would be up to java 4 right so in java that's a data structure called uh, hash map okay so hash map it's uh, actually i mean it can be either into uh, implemented as a binary tree or a hash table inside an hash array right okay so they used a single log to access an entire hash map it is as worse as using a sequential code right it's only it's as worse as using using i mean it, it's even worse than using a sequential code because if you are using multiple threads the each th uh, for each thread some additional memory source of memory is supposed to be allocated and each thread will grab some time hey it, each thread will execute and there are the things like uh, operating system scheduling of processors and context switching etc so it adds huge amount of overhead and you are not going to observe any speed up only after java 5 they uh, started using um, fine grained logs in the hash map implementation okay so let's jump straight to the code and i will show you how i implemented fine grained logs in c okay so the idea is that so here i have created n number of logs so this n denotes the number of threads okay so the m denotes the number of uh element i mean the the length of the array that we are going to use and i denotes the number of increment each thread is supposed to do so for example here since the number of threads is 10 and each thread is supposed to increment 10,000 times right yes hundred thousand times so each thread is supposed to increment hundred thousand times so uh we will we we have to observe at 1 million increments right so each thread so there are 10 threads and each thread has to increment 100,000 times. So we, we, will, we will observe 1 million increments. Okay. And here are the functions. So this init function, what it does is that it initializes the mutexes. So there are n mutexes and all those mutexes will get initialized. And this clear, it just clears the array, it just sets everything, every element of the array to zero. And the sum, it, it the sum function is used to uh, show that uh, the all the threads work as expected. 
so it's it, it will it is supposed to return the value of 1 million right each time increment so the beauty of using macros is that you can use you can simply modify the all these variables m n and i and you can experiment it with i mean you can easily experiment experiment with this code okay and it's random increment course log so it just uses a single global mutex so when when the threads execute this function right so it just uses a single global uh, mutex and only one thread will be allowed to access the array at any instant of time but in fine locked implementation right fine locked implementation at most 10 threads like n number of threads at most n number of threads can access the array at the same time and there will be no uh, i mean uh, race conditions or conflicts because we are mapping the uh, index i mean the array <clears throat> the indexes of the array to the logs appropriately right so declare these variables to benchmark as usual right uh, random seed and here i have declared the number of arrays to be n as well okay. so initializing the mutexes so uh, next creation of 10 threads right just uh, you just have to refer the pthread library okay i will uh, definitely make a video on how to use the pthread library in future but anyway by reading the code itself you will you'll get the pretty much uh, the idea how to use it right so then we will wait for all the threads all the 10 threads to complete then we will print the result of the sum then they will print then we will print the time taken right so time taken for coast locking screen okay then we will clear the array then we will reset the every element of the array to zero then we will repeat the same process but this time with fine locked function right random increment with fine locked uh, and we will, we will wait for the threads to finish then we will print the results right so let's execute this wait a minute let's compile the code uh, execute it so as you can see <clears throat> the coast locking scheme takes a huge amount of time but fine locking scheme fine mean fine grade locking scheme it's much very faster it's magnitude faster. it's it's order of 20,000 times faster than the coast locking scheme because why it, this is the case is when a thread is waiting for uh, waiting to acquire a log it actually it it keeps looping to check whether it can acquire a log it constantly pulls okay it constantly uh runs through a while loop internally okay it constantly runs through a while loop and it tries to acquire the log repeatedly so imagine that all the trend threads are trying i mean are fighting for one single log so at any instant of the time nine threads are looping to acquire the log so that's an overhead and uh, internally in operating system the uh, context switching will also happen so it's likely that likely we observe that when we use a coarse locking scheme our performance is too low right but we uh, observe significant speed up in fine grain locking scheme i, I mean you can uh, uh, repeat the experiment as many times as you like and you, every time you will observe the same result right it's at the order of magnitude 20,000 times faster than the coarse locking scheme. Okay. And that's it for the video. And please like and subscribe. Comment your questions below. I would like to hear from you and uh, give any suggestions for future videos as well. Thank you.